And I think we're live. When you get live, when you catch up with us, when you join us, drop a comment. Let me know you're here. It's Thursday night, and the mood is right to talk about bass fishing. The best base that I think will work the best for you this weekend, and answer all of your questions. As you can see, we've got some help tonight. My uh, son is out of town, and that's his dog, Bailey, right there. Bailey is a little bit crazy, but she's a loyal and loving companion. But she really enjoys playing and running. That is one of the fastest dogs you will ever see because she practices running a lot. Man, it's been a uh, eventful day in the word of old, in the world, in the world, word, world, in the world of Billy Lawson. I, forgive me if I seem a little tired tonight. Uh, started early this morning, had a full day guide trip, had a great day. We had a great time on the water, great customers today. Boy, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we caught some good fish. Started off the very first fish this morning was a really nice one. Um, so good day. Got done with that. Beat feet over to Lake Fork Marina. Got to talk to the kids at Camp Bass. Camp Bass is a deal where 36 kids get selected. Like I think over 500 and something apply to go to this Camp Bass. It's a multi-day deal. They get to go out on the water with guys and all stuff. It's a really great organization, great deal. Uh, and we got to go talk with them tonight about uh, how to further. Their interest, if they want to pursue it in the industry uh, going forward once they get through school and out of school and all that. So uh, me and Captain Ron got to talk to them about that, and that was awesome, man. Had a great, great time. And now here I am with you guys. And and I got some new baits from Sixth Sense Fishing. So uh, we're going to talk about some new baits tonight. We're going to talk about the best baits for this week and just kind of generally what's going on with the fishing right now. So let's start right there. Generally, what's going on with the fishing? Um, you know, it's kind of a grind. It's not like there's not a lot of people catching a lot of fish right now. We had another crazy cold front in July. I mean, it was a cool front. Like we, the other morning, it was like 61 degrees when I left my house in July. Like it was almost in the 50s in July. Think about that for a second. Like it's wild. But the fishing is kind of a grind. There's some fish shallow, there's some fish deep. There's some fish scattered in between suspending, schooling fish, like a little bit of everything going on, which makes it real hard to put together anything sometimes, especially put anything together consistently. But uh, I am fishing more shallow than I was earlier in the summer. <laughs> BDK Outdoors, I'm sorry. I just, this comment caught me off guard. In one day, today... I caught a Gasper Goo, old Jasper, a Gar on a jackhammer, and a Bowfin on a frog, all shallow and glade. <laughs> That's a multi-species kind of day right there, Jack. Um, so the fishing's kind of scattered. We're doing a little bit of everything. I am fishing in shallow more now than I was earlier in the summer. Uh, still fishing offshore a lot too, though. So spent a lot of time offshore. So let's get into the baits that I'm using to catch these fish. Uh, first thing in the morning, shallow. I think if you're not, if you want to fish shallow early in the morning, like I am, if you're not picking up a frog first thing in the morning, you're wrong. Now you can't get your hands on this one just yet. This is the six cents prototype frog in the color that we have affectionately named Mike for all my Louisiana brethren out there. He kind of looks like a tiger a little bit. You know what I'm saying? All you LSU fans out there, that's old Mike right there. Um, but the Spro Popping Frog works as well. This one is catching them better than my Spro. Like I'm throwing this with my customers throwing Spros or vice versa. And this frog has consistently been catching the fish better than the Spro Popping Frog has. And I love the Spro Popping Frog, so I really can't wait for this sucker to get released so all y'all can get your hands on it. Because it is a darn, darn good one. The hookup ratio is amazing. It's a little bit longer than the Spro. It's got longer hook shank on it. Hooks them really well. All right, let's go on to the next shallow bait here. Now, this is one that I literally just got in. But, you know, this time of year when the bite gets a little tough sometimes, weightless plastics up shallow can be a really uh, good idea. Bailey, hold on now, Bailey. Bailey's trying to come help us. Y'all, come here, Bailey. Look. We got help, folks. We got some help tonight. Old Bailey. She's a good girl. All right, get out. Go. Go lay down. No, go. Out. Go. My apologies. It is live around here. This is a new bait called the clout. Bailey, get. you're going to get hooks in you. Go away. Okay, lay down right there, girl. Sorry, guys. My dog sometimes listens about as good as my kids do. This bait is called the clout. This, out of... 
Six Sense has a bunch of new plastics out, and they're all really, really, really good. This one's the one I'm most excited about. The Clout 5.4 is a stick bait. Now, you think, what can you do to a Senko? A Senko is a Senko. It's a round stick, about five, five inches long. It's just a cylinder. Like, there's nothing to do to it. Well, wrong. Leave it up to old Casey Sobject up there to take... To take a bait that hadn't been changed in forever, you know, some report softer, some report harder, some sink lower fat, but they're all basically the same, more or less. Some a little better than others, pretty much the same. He actually took, and I don't know if it's going to show up very well on this telephone camera, but if you can see, there is some different shaped ridges and ribs on this stick bait right here, soft plastic stick bait, and it makes it sink and shake and do everything differently. It's a better mousetrap of maybe the best fishing bait of all time when it comes to a Senko. Like they took a Senko and then totally redesigned it and made it better. It's amazing what those guys do. So the Clout 5.4, I know you guys aren't gonna have those in your hands unless you've already ordered them because if you order them tonight, you're probably not gonna have them in your hands before tomorrow afternoon. But go to sixcentsfishing.com and order up the Clout 5.4. It's gonna be bad to the bone. I can't wait to get out there. Uh, you can rig it weedless Texas rig. You can wacky rig it. I'm probably going to be wacky rigging it right now. Uh, when the bike gets tougher, I really like the wacky rig, those stick bait type of baits. But all these plastics that they just got at Six Sense Fishing, one thing you guys do need to know, they, they're very limited quantities for right now. Uh, they've got another run of them coming, but they're not going to be here till December. So they're already out of stock on some of them. So you need to go to Six Sense Fishing like as soon as we're done tonight. Go straight to SixCentsFishing.com. Order up the plastics that you want. Punch in the code your Lake Fork Guide. Get your 10% discount. And then go to Catch and Fish with new baits that the fish haven't seen yet that not everybody's going to have for six months or five months or whatever it'll be. Um, third bait. Third bait for up shallow, especially if I get a little wind. If I get a little wind on them grass flats up shallow, the old chatterbait is kicking back in. Now, we've been throwing the chatterbait with the impact shad on the back. But this week, we got cooler water temps. We actually had water get almost like down in, like it, I saw some water that was actually 80 degrees this week, like 8-0. Insane. A lot of 83, 84 degree, a lot, lot of stuff like that. But I saw something that was 80 degrees. Because that water cooled back off, I went back to the smash tail from Smash Tech from my chatterbait trailer. When the water cools back down, that seems to work a little better for me. That impact shad is really good when that water's hot. Uh, as it cools back down, this one seems to get more bites. I quit getting as many bites with the impact shad, switched back over to this, started getting bites again. So, uh, the Smash Tail Junior from Smash Tech is the trailer on the 3 8 ounce chatterbait. Throwing it in white, still throwing it also in the B Height Delight color, that chartreuse and white with the green pumpkin mixed in. Doing both of those. So. All right, now let's transition and talk about a little bit of deep fishing. Uh, the first bait that I want to talk about, it's that time of year. Like we said, we got some suspending fish. We got some schooling fish. Uh, and even when they're not schooling, they're, they're just kind of hanging around, roaming around out in front of and over some of these obvious offshore structures that we like to fish. Uh, my number one pick right now deep, is a, a flutter spoon. You know, a flutter spoon is getting some bites uh, for a lot of guys. And... This is my favorite flutter spoon. This is a Joe Spates. It's almost got all the paint chewed off of it. And the part that does still have paint has teeth marks all up and down it. So I guess it's caught a few over its time. Um, but the big flutter spoon, if you're seeing fish schooling, or if you drive over there, if you see some surface activity, you drive over there and you see suspended fish, definitely, definitely, definitely pick up the flutter spoon. Uh, bridge pilings, another good place where fish are suspended right now, where you can take this thing and throw it beside bridge pilings in wide open water on some of the big bridges out on the main lake on Lake Fork and get you a couple bites. So try that out too. Um, next is another new bait from Six Sense Fishing. Oh, I figured out why Bailey came in here. She heard this package rattling and she thought I had some cheese or some bacon or something for her, some kind of treat. That's the deal. You need, you need some cheese, you hungry? That dog, that's the hungriest dog ever. She's always hungry. That's her tail thumping. Y'all hear that? <laughs> All right, so the next thing for out deep. Now, you can drop shot this bait or Carolina rig it. It's really good. The new Ned Fry from Six Sense Fishing. Another little fry style bait. We're going to show it to you in detail right here. This bait has some flotation to it, so it's going to be great on a drop shot. It's going to stand out straight and kind of float, flutter a little bit. It's going to be great on a Carolina rig if you put a light wire hook on there, a little 2 aught. 
uh, rig and hook. A little light wire hook is going to be best on that. Going to give some flotation behind that Carolina rig. The Ned Fry is going to be a deadly, deadly offshore finesse bait from Six Sense Fishing. Uh, that is my fifth bait. It is that time of year. I don't recommend a drop shot very often, but it's the time of year to do some drop shotting without a doubt. It's the time of year to do that. Somebody said paint the spoon with some nail polish. What hook do I use for my wacky rig? On my wacky rig, I like to use a one-aught Gamagatsu uh, Finesse Wide Yap Weedless. It's a mouthful, but that's what we use. What area shallow are you fishing? The lake I fish is not on the Fish Life app. Um, man, the very, like, where there is no deep water, like, back, the end of the road, all the way back, far up a creek arm as you can get, far up the end of the lake as you can get, and then looking for cleaner water and looking for vegetation. That's the main two things. I go as far back in the creeks and far up the lake as I can go, and then I start looking for healthy vegetation and cleaner water. Um, that's the best I can tell you on a lake that I haven't been on what I would look for. And that's, that's what I look for on fork. That's the areas I, I go look hunting down on fork, so. Two weeks ago, this is from DJ Shack 101. Two weeks ago at Lake Monticello, I broke my PB twice on hashtag Big Perm. Hashtag, we got a Big Perm announcement for tonight, too. Hashtag Big Perm. Got the game warden called on me. You must have been fishing inside the buoys down there today, and you, you broke the rules and went inside the buoys, I bet. Got the game warden caught on me, gave me a warning, and turned out to be Smash Tech Bait's owner, Mr. Heath Taylor, <laughs> from the 100-pound video from last year on Big Perm out at Lake Monticello about this time of year. Have I used the Divine Shaggy Head Worm, or are you going to be sticking to Old Big Perm? No, well, boys, that, that's two different things. The Divine Shaggy Head Worm and Big Perm are two totally different things. You're talking about a Zoom Trick Worm and big perm like I got room for both well now I don't need a zoom trick worm because I got a better version from six cents they got forward facing ribs a little bit fatter tail a little more action to it than the original trick worm so it's it's a again a better mousetrap uh, that one's not in the top five because I'm so excited about that clout I think it's gonna be a big deal but yes I've got a box full that I just got in of the uh, six cents finesse worms and there, I've actually had some of those for a while. I had they, they gave me some prototypes of those seven, eight months ago, and I've caught some really nice fish on them. There's actually a video all the way back in November of me catching a couple fish on that uh, that worm long before it came out. So, very, very cool. <laughs> somebody, though, oh, somebody's writing song lyrics for us over here. And the cat's in the cradle and the giant spoon that smashes bash little boy blue and the man in the moon. <laughs> I feel another parody video coming. Let me know what y'all thought of the old Lake Fork Road parody video. Here's what I really want to do. we need to do more bass fishing parody videos? That's Do y'all want to see more bass fishing parody music videos on the Your Lake Fork Guy channel? Do I fish my shaky heads on hard bottom only? I certainly prefer to fish them on a hard bottom. I mean, I guess if I didn't have a choice, uh, if the lake didn't have a bottom and I wanted to fish shaky head, I would if it didn't have the hard bottom, I guess. Yes, it was awesome. Yes, yes, yes. What do you like better, graphite rods or glass rods, or do you use both, and for what situation you use them for? So here's the deal. The only advantage to a glass rod the only advantage to a glass rod is keeping the fish hooked up. That's the only advantage it brings. Everything else it's not as good at. You don't have as much hook setting power. It's not as sensitive. Um, it's not lighter. It's heavier. The only advantage to a glass rod is keeping the fish hooked up. I like to think, <laughs> and Captain Ron would argue this with me, and I, I like to think that I'm pretty good at keeping them hooked up. I know how to handle fish. I know how to get them to the boat. I know how to horse them when I need to, play them when I need to, all that stuff. I use all graphite rods. I don't have any glass rods. Now, I will get some graphite rods that have more bend in the tip for certain techniques, you know, smaller crankbaits, uh, chatterbaits, stuff like that. I like a little more tip to keep help keep them hooked up. So, <laughs> Somebody says on the music videos, yes, but I got to wear a pair of them white boots like Z-Dub wears. 
<laughs> man, them old Cajun Reeboks, dude. Z Dub loves them. I don't know if that's uh, I don't know if that's quite my style. I do have some new kicks that I'm pretty proud of that I'm going to be showing off on the channel uh, here pretty soon. So uh, I just got those in the mail today as well. That was uh, I was excited to see those. How do I like the new Divine Rod? Well, for you guys that know me and know this channel, y'all know that the Chatterbait is probably my very favorite bait of all time. That if I have one bait to pick, I'd probably pick the Chatterbait over all others. Does that answer your question? My very favorite technique is rigged up on this Divine Prototype. Now, this rod is coming soon. It's not out yet. I am super, super impressed. This rod is unbelievably good. Um... I'm not going to say that they topped the Century Series. I don't think they did. But, boy, they got real close. And I'll be honest, that little white patch on there looks real good. Like that rod, if you're into, like, stuff that looks cool, that's your deal right there. Um, big Perm T-shirts. We talked about them last week on the live stream. We should have those up for sale on the website tomorrow evening. They will go up for sale. I think I told you guys $15. It's actually going to be, like, $17 or $18. Uh, these are direct to garment printing. They are high quality shirts. They're gonna have that that logo that's on there is part of the shirt. It's not ever gonna crack and go away. It's gonna be part of the shirt forever. So they'll last you. Uh, cost us a little more than anticipated. So we're gonna get them to you guys for seventeen, eighteen dollars somewhere in that retail. We gotta see what our final cost shakes out to be. But we should have them ready to go, ready to order tomorrow evening. You can start placing orders for big perm T-shirts. These are limited quality, so limited quantity. I should say limited quantity. The quality is not limited. The quality is very good. The quantity is limited, so check that out. What are the specs on that divine rod that I have the chatterbait on? That is a which none of these specs are like some of these aren't final. Like they might this model might not even exist when they get the final line because it's a prototype rod. But uh, that one right there is a seven five medium heavy with a, uh, a fast action tip. Uh, it's got a lot of tip. A lot of tip, which I like on a chatterbait rod, but it's 7.5 medium heavy, so it's got some meat at the bottom end. Um, do you see a difference in belly weighted underspin and a jig head underspin swim bait spawn versus summer? Do I see a difference? The difference is uh, the jig head, you can vary the weight. You can make it heavy to get deeper. Um, other than that, it's just the weedless factor. As far as how the fish bite it or how many fish bite it, no, there's really not any difference. Also, on the jig head spin bait, uh, uh, underspins, a lot of them come with bigger blades. So now you can change the blade out on the weedless one and get a bigger blade if you want to. That'll give it more lift. Uh, the weedless ones are pretty light for the size hook that on the size bait. Like there's a certain size hook that'll fit a certain size bait, and the weights on those are usually pretty light. The advantage of the jig head is you can change the weight up and down uh, using a different size jig head and really get that fish deeper or get it shallower depending on what you want to do. But it's not weedless. Am I starting to fill up for next year's spawn time of year yet? Yes, yes. I've already got, uh, uh oh, we're kind of losing connectivity here. Hopefully, hang in there, hang in there Wi-Fi. We need to get the crankbait out. We didn't bring it. Maybe I need to hang the spoon off my hat. I don't know. There we go. It came back. Sorry about that if it interrupted for a minute. Uh, Mike Simmons want to know if we are filling up the guidebooks for next year's spawning cycle. Yes, yes. March is starting to get quite a few dates booked. April starting to get a few dates booked. So I would say that by New Year's Day, if you don't have your spawning time dates booked, you might not get them. Those usually fill up by New Year's Day. Brian House says he caught an over up shallow yesterday, 8 pounds, 7 ounces. I no <laughs> doubt about it, buddy. There's some really good fish up shallow that have never left that have been there all year. Six cents hubcap. I know that spoon bite is on. Yeah, the six cents hubcap. I got the Joe Spate spoon. That's my very favorite one of all time. I really like that uh, seven inch Joe Spate spoon. But six cents has one that's even bigger. And yes, they'll bite that one too. I've caught a bunch of fish, big fish on that one. Uh-uh, Bailey, no. Bailey, no. Go, go. Get out of here for you. Hooks in you. Go. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, Michael Salinas, they got some big smash tech perm while they were in stock. Yes, they were in stock. I think there's still some in stock at Lake Fort Marina. Not sure. Uh, somebody said something up here that I wanted to answer. 
Picking up a new Lose Tournament Pro LFS this weekend, he thoughts. That's a great reel. Uh, that's a really good reel. Um, I haven't got to get my hands on it yet, but I've heard a lot of good things. Somebody says they won't buy the Big Perm t-shirt until we tell you the backstory. The backstory is really simple. We made one of the most epic bass fishing videos, literally, literally, and I say this humbly as I can, but literally one of the most epic bass fishing videos of all time when we launched Big Perm last year. A year ago when that bait got released, when that worm got released by Smash Tech. Uh, the, the backstory is I saw this. This I'm going to give you in-depth backstory. Hold on. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. We're going to go on a little trip back in time. Um, last summer... Earlier in the summer, I was doing something with Heath, and I went over to his shop, and I was in there, and I saw this big worm sitting there, and we always have been throwing the magnum trick worms on big shaky heads. I'm like, hey, what's up? I said, look at this big worm, man. What's the deal with this? Is this? Are you making this? Did you buy this? And what, what is this deal? What is this worm? And he's like, yeah, I'll make it for myself. I'm like, well, can I get a couple of them? And he gives me some, like a handful. And I just caught them better than I ever caught them. Like, he's just unbelievably good, successful on my guide trips. We we're just catching the fire out of him. So I call him back, and I'm like, hey, uh, you want to sell some worms? Because this thing's bad to the bone, and I can get some footage on it. We can, You can start selling these worms as part of your lineup. So I talked to him into this. This is about the third bait I've done this to him on, where he didn't want to sell it, but he ended up selling it. So we're like, okay, so we make a plan. We schedule a trip for me and him. And actually, a buddy of mine, Chris Blackman, came along to go fish Lake Monticello late in the summertime, hot, hot, miserable conditions. It was over 100 that day, no wind. Uh, but we made a plan to go fish Lake Monticello, and we were going to go try to catch some fish on this big worm that he had. Well, he called it the Magnum Crawler. The official name that he gets actually called the Magnum Crawler. That's that real name of it. But that morning when we got there, I said, listen, we're going to say Magnum Crawler on camera, but just so you know, because the old Friday movies, I'm a fan of the old Friday movies. So I told him, just so you know, this will always be Big Perm to me. Now, what Big Perm is, is in the old Friday movies, the uh, one of the characters is named Big Worm, and this is a Big Worm. So in the Friday movie, one of the other characters always calls him Big Perm. He's like, hey, what's up, Big Perm? I mean Big Worm. So it's just kind of a funny thing from the old Friday movies that I thought was funny, and uh, it was a big worm, so I called it Big Perm. And that's the whole story. We called it that in that video that day, um, and it's kind of stuck. <laughs> I think more people know it. Like, they go to buy the worm, and they're not sure what it is because it says Magnum Color in the package, and they're like, is this Big Perm? I don't know. It looks like Big Perm. It says Smash Tech. It's a big old worm, but I don't know. So, yep. Stephen Latham said it was tough today. Uh, we had a good morning. We had a good start. By the afternoon, it did get tough on us as well. The afternoon was slow for us, but the morning was good today for us. But we've had some tough days lately, too. It's not easy right now. <laughs> Somebody said you should play that video in the description of your next video so people can watch it who haven't because it's a it was an awesome video. We caught that day when we launched Big Perm, we caught we fished from 7:30 to 12:30, uh, so five hours of fishing, and we caught 25 bass for 104 pounds. We actually recorded and documented over a hundred pounds of bass on camera in one day. Now I know that's been done before. I know people have caught 100 pounds of bass in a day before. But I couldn't find it on video anywhere. Like the MLF record's like 89 pounds or 90, something like that. And so I couldn't find anywhere else where it's fully documented on camera over 100 pounds of bass. So uh, we may have the only one of those that exists. So it was pretty cool. Can I put a link to that video in the description for the next videos? People see, yeah, absolutely. We can put a link to the Big Perm launch video, 100 pounds of bass in a single day. You can just go to my channel and search 100 pounds of bass. You could probably just go to YouTube and search 100 pounds of bass in a single day, and it would probably pop up. What baits for evening to dark time frame? I'm going to that frog, and I'm probably not going to be willing to put it down. I'll probably only throw that frog during that time frame. Michael Sims says he watched it four times. 
that's why you're the MVP. You're the most valuable pimp and viewer that we got there, Mike Sims, because you are a pimp. I know you are. I I know how you roll, dog. You be pimping. Are you using a 50 or 65 on the frog? I'm using the 65, just the middle, the normal size uh, Spro popping frog. Um, at dark, what if I'm not getting frog bites at dark? Uh, well, if it's real calm, I, I'm not going to change anything from the shallow fishing. That shallow fishing, I'm primarily doing that early. I mean, it, you can catch them up shallow in the middle of the day, but primarily most of my shallow fishing success is in the morning time, uh, and then I'm going out deep during the middle of the day. Um, but if they're not biting the frog, well, then if it's calm, I'm going to wacky rigs or throw some different weightless plastics around vegetation. And if it's a little bit of wind ripple, I'm going to throw that chatterbait. So the baits would stay the same as they would for the morning time for the evening. I don't know. I'm never out there in the evening, so I would just be starting from scratch and guessing. But that's what I would do. I would just fish it just like I do in the morning. Now we need a bait called a little twenty twin twin. <laughs> Round hill. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is amazing, uh, Jared Carson. You just win comment of the night. That was greatness. Uh, didn't I say they're gonna make Mike in a popping person? Mike, all the six inch frogs are popping person. This is this is Mike. Mike uh, is in like Mike the tiger because he looks like a tiger. Uh, this is the popping version. It's. That's it's hey the only frog I really throw is the spro popping frog until now that six cents is making a better popping frog, uh, but it is a popping version yes and it walks this frog walks so good it almost glides like it goes like it's whew, tell you it's a bad son of a gun. All right. If you've got questions that I missed, go ahead and drop it in. We got a few more minutes. I want to try to answer every question. I know I missed some guys. Every time you make a comment, it drops me down to the bottom of the comment, so it's impossible for me to keep up with all the comments that come in uh, because you guys are so amazing. Y'all drop so many comments every time we do this on Thursday night. I can't thank you enough. So if I missed your question, please re-ask it now, and I will try to get to it uh, as best I can. <sighs> Fish Life, the app updates will be going out over this next week so uh not for this weekend but the next weekend you'll have fresh content on every lake so if you're subscribed to a package if you're thinking about subscribing to a package you want to get the freshest uh freshest information possible be sure you go subscribe next week or if you are subscribed stay subscribed through next week because you're going to get fresh info next week on all the lakes we're going to make sure we do a full rehaul there's been a lot of changes in the water levels and water columns in the lakes around dfw and all these lakes we have on fish life we're going to make sure we take care of you on that. Do you do Lake Fork winter trips? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I love fishing in the winter at Lake Fork. Um, not always a lot of bites. Sometimes it's very few bites. But, man, it's like almost every fish you catch is a big one. Golly, we catch a lot of big fish in the wintertime. What is the worm called again to do the wacky? The new stick bait, the new stick bait from Six Cents is called the clout. I know it's backwards, but if you can read backwards, read that. The clout, 5.4, right there. I think that's going to be a big, big deal. I think that's going to be a really next level awesome, awesome worm. Billy Curley says, thanks, keep it real, homie. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh... Have I ever fished the Frankenspin, also called Elvis or Frankie Five Finger? It's a one and a quarter ounce lead spinner bait made by Britt Brit Anderson. It's not called Elvis. The original Elvis was made by a guy at Lake Fork way back in the day. Joe Spates, the same guy that invented the Flutter Spoon, made a, a nighttime spinner bait called Elvis. But okay, we'll, we'll go with Frankenspin. No, I've never fished it. We, uh, what were those big lead spinner baits we used to fish around here? Um, Man, the guy that makes Mark Stevenson's jig. Golly, I can't even think of the name. Somebody help me out. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody uh, made some big spinnerbaits around here that we all throw. I still got some out my boat, but they're not in the package. I can't remember the name of the, the who made them. But uh, we had some that were made local that were really good and really popular around Lake Fort. Tips to catch shallow fish during the middle of the day. Uh, if you've got... It's, if you've got wind, you know, it's a chatterbait, swimbait, swim jig. That's your best bet on the edges of vegetation. 
uh, when it's calmer, which a lot of days are right now when it's calmer, or even if it's just light, light wind, and, and really any time, you could try this. Punching. If you've got mats, punch. If you got mats with a few feet of water under them, and really as cool as water temps are, you only need a couple feet of water under the mats right now. Punch. Definitely punch. I think punch is the best deal you can do in the summertime. Um, and then just the weightless plastics, man. It's hard to go wrong with weightless plastics. When the bike gets tough, it's just hard to go wrong with that wacky worm or weightless fluke or weightless stick bait, something like that. It's really hard to beat. The Franken spin smashes here on Pickwick. I'm sure it does. I mean, big one plus ounce spinner baits are a big deal on ledge lakes. Pickwick's definitely a ledge lake, current driven ledge lake. Like, yeah, I could definitely see that working really well. Um, and I, that spinner bait may be a better one than even the one that we've had made here. Uh, I've just never had my hands on it. Is my punch stick still a 7.6 heavy? Yeah, I, I like the uh, the Lux Series 7.6 heavy for punching. Uh, it seems to be maybe the, the stoutest, toughest rod in the lineup. Um, the eight footer's just got a little more tip than I want on a punching rod. It's eight foot heavy, but it's got a moderate tip. I, I, I don't want that in a punching rod. That 7.6 heavy is a bad mamma jamma. I can jerk, I've jerked a lot of fish. If you guys saw the punching video me and Ronnie Kelly did back in December, Fished the tournament on Lake Welsh, big grass lake, a lot of deep grass, and all we did was punch, and we were jacking some good fish and just ripping them out and boat flipping them, and that rod was the deal. Blake Horton says he fished fork last weekend using a half ounce divine underspin with a 4.7 inch Kitek called a six and multiple fours. Using that old jig head underspin, the divine underspin from six cents, bad some gun there. That's a really good bait. Uh, and putting a Kitek on the back of it, and he caught some really good fish. So good job, Blake Horton. What's up on these new fishing shirts? Don't forget to get them in man size. Well, the new fishing shirts like these, those aren't going to be ready for quite some time. Those are those are going to take a while. But we've got the big perm t-shirts that should be on the website tomorrow night. They should be there. Late, worst case scenario, they're going to be on there Saturday. But I think they're going to be ready to go uh, tomorrow evening. And we are ordering sizes from small to 4X. Limited quantities on those sizes, but we're ordering from small to 4X. DJ Shack 101 says, do a parody to Drake Hotline Bling. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Listen, I'm going to do a parody to whatever I'm halfway intelligent enough to make up lyrics to, but I'll, we'll try. We will try. So apparently, y'all do want to see more Bass Fishing Parody music videos. Apparently, a lot of you guys liked it because there's a lot of you guys <laughs> If y'all do another video, I want to see socks and sandals. You want to see the socks with the sandals. That is an odd request. Uh, we got Cajun Reeboks requested and socks and sandals. Like, we're going to have to do an apparel poll and, like, the best outfit wins, and that's what we wear in the video or something. I don't know. You guys are down. <laughs> he used to call me on a bass boat. <laughs> Oh my god, this is so much fun, you guys, dude. That's hilarious. You used to call me on the best, but the Drake Hotline bling. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not sure if you should be proud of yourself or ashamed of yourself, DJ Shaq, but I'm I'm down. I like it either way. You need to come to Pickwick in February or March. You smash the smallies. Always dirty thirties of only small holy cow, thirty pound bags of smallmouth? I mm. That's pretty awesome. And I don't know about always. Nobody always catches 30 pounds. Nobody. On any lake. Ever. Seventies tubes. <laughs> oh, boy. We've gone off the rails at this point. We're talking about music video wardrobes for bass fishing parody videos. And we're going to catch 30 pounds of smallmouth every day. Which, I, I don't know. Maybe it's true. That's... Like, I'm going to have to see some proof, bro. Like, hey, listen, I love you, and I appreciate you so much for watching this channel, but you're going to have to prove that to me because that is a lot to take in, 30-pound smallmouth bags every single day. That's crazy. <laughs> Old Z-Dub has traded us in for them red snappers. He's MIA. He is MIA. He is in Gulf Shores. 
My buddy Zach Watt, ZW, he is in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and he did go fishing uh, for red snapper with his kids yesterday, and apparently they caught him pretty good. <laughs> All right, guys. More of the same comments, man, and I appreciate each and every one of them, but we've gone over most of this stuff. We're a little bit over our allotted time, and I have got to get ready for tomorrow, which comes at 4 o'clock, which is pretty early. So I've been going since 4 o'clock today, and I'm getting pretty tired. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm getting worn out. Not ungrateful, though. How many hours do you put on a boat motor a year? Uh, 300 plus. Be hard-pressed to find somebody that fishes more than I do. I guarantee you that, buddy. <laughs> I've got... Uh, this boat is almost a year old. I've had this boat almost for a year. I've got about a month until I've had it for a year, and it has 319 hours on it. But they're good hours. They're the right hours. They're a lot of idle hours. It was broken correctly, maintained correctly. Like it doesn't, it's not detrimental to the life of the motor. When the motor is broken incorrectly and taken care of correctly, it can last thousands of hours. Like it, it's literally been proven on these shows uh, that if you do it right, it's good. So that's the end of the evening. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us, man. Uh, thank you all for staying. We've had almost the exact same amount from the time it reached its peak. It didn't really die off at all. A lot of you guys stayed for the whole thing. And uh, almost all of you did. And that means so much to me. It tells me, A, that you guys appreciate what we're doing. And I want to express to y'all how much I appreciate what y'all do. Because y'all make it possible for me to do what I love every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. Uh, appreciate it. Can't say it enough. And we'll see you next time right here on Your Lake Fort Guide.